Getting out and about, uh, heading up to Chinchilla. I thought I'd call into Burwood State and catch up with Noel Denning. Hello, mate. How are you, Paul? Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Uh, what is an amazing time of year, just talking off camera. Yeah. You guys have some great stories. I, I reckon we need to do a Clarkson's <laughs> farm up here or something along those lines with you, but amazingly busy time of the year. What You've already had 70 foals this yep. breeding season. 70 and nearly, another, nearly, I think, 65 to go. So, so you're yeah. halfway. Yeah, we're halfway. Yep, it's yeah. all good. So. Um, what is the most you fold down? Oh, uh, yeah, we've done 150 over time. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, it is a good, enjoyable time, though. You can see, I could write a book on the sad stories, probably, and and but there's a lot of good ones that come out of it, too. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that you could write a book on the good ones as well. Yeah, I, I got no doubt of the, the ones that, the ones that, and I'm yeah. sure there's ones that probably some people have said, oh, I give up on them, and, yeah. and they made the races yeah. and winning races. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've persevered. I'm one of them people, yeah. Christine goes crook at me and says, I don't know why you're spending all night with that foal that's going to die. I said, no, you've got to give it every chance anyway, sort of yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. yeah but, and they're people's investments as well oh, yeah. as, well as your I mean. own. That's what I mean. Like, we, we don't charge these people what, what we do. It's our time, sort of thing, but we're just out to... I'm out to prove a point that I can save this little trip, so, yeah. Yeah, so... You, you are a great business. Like, harness racing is a family sport. You guys are truly a family sport. You've got three generations all working as Jonathan's going past. Jonathan doesn't want to be the PR man. He's been quite happy to wave to us as he walked past. Um, but it is three generations um, here, but, like, supporting. But you've got, like, even a bigger family outside of that. Oh, yeah. It's a huge yeah, operation yeah, what you guys yeah. do, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all comes together at the end sort of thing we just got support from everybody in the family which is great sort of yeah. thing so yeah and then like the harness industry is such a good industry it's uh it's been good for us when uh, we love supporting it too if we can so yeah I think I think you guys do an amazing job, and we're going to talk yearling sales and that in a minute. Harness racing, though, in Queensland, there's a bit of a uh, revival, I suppose, it's, yeah. if that's the right word to to use. Things are things are tracking in the right direction. There was a little bit of up and down about Albion Park closing. It yeah. looks like it's staying and yeah. and going to continue racing there. Yeah. And it's a very buoyant little place at the minute. Oh yeah, no, Queensland's just booming at the moment, and um, we're pleased with it. Like, look, we've got um, horses coming from Western Australia, but we have got people moving from over there to to Queensland so um, but they've came to us and so we're, we're very pleased to take their horses on sort of thing but I think we're just about the limit we might have to buy some more land I think we're going to keep going <laughs> so the gate the gates are even starting to push some family members just got underneath the underneath the desk when you said that about more land they're like no um, but it wasn't that long ago um, that Queensland was in, you know, I suppose a bit of turmoil and things yeah. like that, and a bit of hard work and a bit of dedication yeah. from a lot of people yeah. Um, yeah. has really turned it around. Yeah, I, I feel that um, we've had a few good people at the top there that has pushed pushed our harness industry up where we should be again, sort of thing. Um, it's just taken time, but and, and it's all money, I suppose. But um, we, we're asking not, we're not asking for much. We just like to probably have another track if we could. Um, and I think in time we will get it, but yeah. it's just it's just one of them things they've got to see, and, and as you, everybody knows, governments haven't got any money at the moment anyway, sort of thing. So, yeah. and, and that's a big reality. But I mean, the working relationship you guys have with Racing Queensland, and then also the government on top, yeah. uh, is great. Like, unfortunately, where I'm from, Victoria, there has been that disjointed part, if you like, yes. and and yeah. things have separated, and you can see the turmoil that it that it actually causes. Yeah. The relationship everyone has got here, working together, um, and from afar, it looks like the whole racing, the three racing yeah. codes, all working together to put on a product and and grow the wagering industry oh yeah I, I think the three codes are good um yeah if we probably if we could just get another track for ourselves and the turnover would be even better and bigger and everybody knows that's where our money comes from is your return but um it's hard to hard to get it all in one go sort of thing so the one recommendation i'll say is also a training center if they can because um Looking at New South Wales, I'm extremely jealous of what they've been able to do, but to be able to encourage new people mm. to come in if they don't have to buy the land, like yeah. you're talking about going and buying land yeah. and, and vehicles and that to be able to get there, that's the other encouraging yeah. point, which you can't have that at Albion Park, unfortunately. That's right, and, that's, and that's, we're, we're great believers in a training track because there's a lot of young people out there and everybody knows you, you're going to need a million dollars if you're going to go and buy a block of ground in the house, but if you've got a training track, you can maybe be able to rent or buy a, a smaller house nearby sort of thing. Um, we've just got to convince the government this is the way it should be. And we'd have we'd have 20 young people. Hey, there is even some older trainers. They said they would go to a training a, a track if we had it all set up for them too, sort of thing. So it's just uh, an out something different that it would be anyway. Yeah. Well. 
How long have you been in the sport? I said there before about three generations. Uh, are you like are you a second generation or like? No, I'm first. I'm the first. Yeah, yeah. We we started. We Chris and I started this off in '82. Uh, so. Doing almost 22 years. Uh, 42 yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah. 42 yeah. years yeah. ago. Should have been able to work yeah. that out. Actually, pretty easy. Yeah. Did you ever expect to get to where you are? Um, probably not. But we had. Oh well, I suppose I was a bit of a believer in what I was doing. But we did have some help. Like when. Um, Success Stud was in Queensland, and John and Mary, they, uh, we used to have horses here on adjustment of theirs, and um, then we we started breeding. I just said to John one day, I said, well, if you ever decide you've got too many horses, I said, I'll take a few, and next thing he decided, he said, well, I'm moving south. He said, do you want some? So the truckload started turning up, and and same with um, Kennaway with Lawson Coburn. He'd done the same thing. He sort of said, no, you can have some horses, but... Yeah, we started off with two horses and now there's uh, 400 here at the moment. No regrets? No, no, no. It's been a great, great industry. Like we, the farm wouldn't be running if it, if it was just running cattle and growing grain. No, no, the, the boys wouldn't be home helping us anyway, sort of thing. So we wouldn't have what we've got now. So, no, it's been, it's been a top industry. That's what I love. So there's so many great stories about this yeah. industry, especially where, like I say, Victoria at the minute, things are going rough to yeah. hard. Yeah. Uh, and that, and I'm sure you would have seen plenty of hard times right. here as well, not just even droughts. Oh, so I'd oh, imagine yeah. there'd be a turn, yeah. downturn from time to time. Oh, but yeah. you just got to try and ride through it, don't we? Oh, yeah. At the times, times you do get depressed sort of thing, but horses are one of those things, especially when you're dealing with so many owners sort of thing and you have a few little things go wrong. And no one can say they haven't had things go wrong with horses. Oh. And, and um, you might, you know, in a foaling time like this, you might lose two foals, and and you just then you got to ring the owners and and tell them why and all that sort of thing, and you you think ah oh, this shouldn't be happening, but it happens everywhere. Um, yeah, it it makes you tough, I can tell you. I I learned to to deal. I used to get a bit stressy once, but um, now I probably eat a lot easier than I used to be, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm trying to trying to teach the boys to be a bit that way. They get a bit stressed sometimes, but anyway, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> probably with me. <laughs> but I think stress sometimes is pride as well. Oh, yeah. I, I would imagine yeah. that's where oh, the yeah, stress well, comes that, from. It is. It is. You're trying to do a good job for everybody, and uh, and you, uh, hey, we all, as I always, say to people, the horses are our own sort of thing as well because um, we're here 24 hours, seven days a week, and uh, that's what that, we've taken that on. So that's why we like it. I think. So. A lot of things going through my head. That actually was going to be my next question is to go through. What sort of hours do you guys put in, especially this time of year? Like, Well, well, I suppose I've been on two nights bowling. Well, last night I didn't get any sleep, but I work all day. and So, yeah, so in tw in 48 hours, yeah, probably, yeah, you'd probably go on for 40 hours sort of thing. You might get eight hours sleep in, but yeah. Sleep's not everything. I'm still young and fit, so I'm right. So. Yeah, Caleb goes, the younger generation aren't meant to be workers, but he looks like a worker. Yeah, no, Caleb's a good kid. Yeah, he's an extra good kid. So. <laughs> he, has a, he has a crack. Um, you've got the yearlings behind you. That was the reason I had a few things going through my head on which, which direction. Um, so you're not only following down a heap of mares, getting mares back in foal. How many of you, we'll stay on that for a sec. How many have you got back in foal already? Uh, we'd have 40 back in foal now, sort of thing. Yeah, positive 14-day tests. We've got mares coming up 28-day tests this week. So, yeah, so we're heading in the right direction. But we've got, we'll have close to 200 mares this year on farm to, to inseminate as we go along. Yeah. That's amazing. You're great yeah. at answering my questions because I was going to answer that. So yeah. 200 to get in foal. Yeah. Will you fall? You surely you don't fall that two hundred down next year. Um, no, we'll go close to it though. Yeah, I think I think we'll um, a lot of them mares will be coming back. So then we have we've got people um, send mares now and we fold them, get them back in foal and they go home. Then they'll come back to foal again and then we'll put them back in foal again and go around the circle and which it, which we sort of enjoy doing that because. Um, not quite as many on farm that way sort of thing so yeah it's a if i uh come to chinchilla again next year i won't do this interview we'll, we'll go i'll go out and see the guys at egmont or somewhere like that it'll be fine because if you're doing 200 i reckon it'll be no, no, you won't no, be as no. laid back as what you are now no, no, it's all right no no we no you can't you can't get stressed out with that so no no it's, it's just it's just one of them things and you just got to keep putting them keeping them in putting them out in the paddocks keeping an eye on them all yeah it's just a it's a, it's a job just to keep an eye on them foals. They're the main worry sort of thing. Until you get them, and still you still have problems when they're six weeks old. But um, when they're little fellas, that's the time to be, be on to it sort of thing. You get scours and all the little different things that happen. And maybe one doesn't want to suck mum, but yeah, you sort that out. So yeah. Um, Caleb and his partner, whose name has escaped me, I apologise. 
Brook. Um, they were handling the yearlings here. Oh, that was that was our other girl. Oh, that was that was Lauren. Lauren, yeah. sorry, Lauren were handling the um, the the yearlings there before and and educating. That's what I'm saying. You you got so much on, but you pride yourself on having your horses where you can handle them oh, yeah. and get around them, and yeah. you're never too busy to be able oh, to do it. No, no, I, th I think that the more you put into them yearlings, the better off. And we have them; they go to the breakers, and the breakers are just so happy with them because they're so quiet. But as I keep on saying to them here, if the more you put into it, the more you get back out of it at the end of the day. And, and when it comes putting them into the stables and all that, no, easy work sort of thing. So they'll be on the walker. We'll get, we're starting on our yearlings now for um, the February sale. And um, they'll, they'll just have a little bit on the walker at the moment, then put out sort of thing. And so when they come in, when they go full time, yeah, they'll be... They'll just take it as an everyday step sort of thing. So yeah. and that'll be around that Christmas time, and I mean that's oh, when yeah. it does get busy with yeah, people. Well, that are trying to take yeah. time off. Yeah, no, we'll be we'll be started in middle or oh, beginning of December. We'll be started well and truly on our yearlings. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nutrien, you've been a part of it since its inception. Uh, February twenty third is the sale. You enjoy the Nutrien. You enjoy the um, you yeah. know the, the the way they go about it. Oh yeah, no, though it's really a top run place sort of thing. Yeah. Mark's got his head screwed on. He just, know, but he knows Mark's good. He knows everybody and knows what's going on. And um, a real top businessman with Nutri, and we're pleased with it, sort of thing. So and we've had great success at the sale, sort of thing. So we're, so we're just waiting until now for the race nights to come up. And, that's in uh, November. That's coming up in November. That's yeah, exciting in yeah, itself. Yep, yeah, that'll that'll be an extra good night, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're just waiting to waiting to see what's how many nominated for that yet, sort of thing. So yeah. I think there's a bit of confidence. I was talking to Greg before I came here and you know, a couple of the things he wanted to highlight, like with Nutrim, with their commitment, they are hanging around, they're sponsoring the sprint lane. Yep. Um, and they're also you've got the race series in November. Yep. Um, and then with the sale, you've also got the driver's yep. slot race yep. coinciding yep. on yep. that Friday, yep. Saturday leading yep. into the sale on the Sunday. Yep. So they're building the excitement as well, which is really cool. That's right, yeah. They're bringing, bringing sort of the whole sport uh, in into the racing part, but into the sale part as well sort of thing. We're trying... What we're really trying to do is encourage people to maybe buy a yielding or come in on a share in a yielding sort of thing because there's a lot of benefits at the end of the day. Like you have your ups and downs. Everybody knows you've got horses. It seems a long time from the day you get it broken in to get it to the track. But uh, that's that's how racing goes sort of thing. But um, but the especially with our Q bread, you pick up your 14,000 straight up and, and and you're on the go sort of thing. That's that's paid for your breaker and your first prep more or less and, and, and getting it there to the track. So uh, from there on, it's, yeah. And, and our prize money's not top, but it's it's not bad sort of thing. So yeah. The reason I shake my head is uh, yeah, your first win bonuses and that here in Queensland but compared to what's happened just recently in Victoria. Yeah. And it's un, you know it's unavoidable what, what has happened. But uh, 14,000, then seven, yeah. and then three yeah. uh, after that. It's yeah. just, it is yeah. ridiculous. Oh, but, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it, but it's also good. Oh, yeah, no, I think it's great. But I just think, well, 14000 for a two-year-old to pick up and, and plus your prize money on top. So you're getting 20000 out of your first go if, you, if you're lucky enough to get there sort of thing. But there's not too many young horses that don't don't pick it up. If, no. you, if you look through it, there's um, a lot of money handed out up here sort of thing. So We want people to be aware, as you said, February 23rd that um, the sale is, so it'll be the 20th and 20, uh, sorry, 21st and 22nd will be the driver series, which is the inaugural one of that as well, which is exciting. Well done, the yep. Queensland Racing, the Creek and everyone else yep. behind the scenes that are driving that as well. And then, as you said, co coinciding with this sale. May, great numbers too, around the 100 yeah, I believe right. yeah. is, is what's yeah. going to be going through which yeah. is super exciting, I think the first year I reckon we're around 40 so yeah. it's grown. Oh yeah, no it, it's, it's done extra good sort of thing and like um, we're at Captain Treacherous and, and Art Majors and all that sort of thing so yeah, so we're, we're really pleased and, and uh, Storms inside and Poster Boys and yeah, we've got a real mixture of youngsters we're taking to the sale for, so it's very good yeah. Yourself and Chris, you've been getting a few winners too. I've noticed. I've um, been oh, yeah. scrolling through. You're going okay as well, yeah. just as just as you guys as the breeders. Oh yeah, as as breeders, we, we really enjoy that part. Yeah. yeah, watching what we've produced and put out there, sort of thing. Yeah. So when we we feel that we're not up at the top, but um, yeah, we have a lot of fun anyway. Sort of watching them go around, selling them, and and getting them there. And yeah, so when when they're born, you wonder whether that's the next little winner or not. So do you uh, when do you get the time to watch them? Uh, yeah, I usually get up probably four o'clock in the morning and, and have a look at them then if I don't get time to watch it while the races are on. So, yeah, have a look at all the replays and see what's going on. I, I look at most races in Australia if I can sort of thing, but uh, that takes time. So That's what I was wondering. 
Thank you. One question I am going to ask you. How young are you? I, I'll be 70 next year. Unbelievable. Yeah. I think I think it's a credit. I think Bird would start to credit. We're not going to ask Chrissy's age. I'll get into all sorts of trouble. <laughs> um, thankfully, I'll be down the road before she sees this. But I think it's amazing. As I said, three generations of harness participants working here. Uh, but it's not... It's not three of you. Um, yeah. It's a massive, yeah. massive uh, family effort. Yeah. I think it's great for the industry. You also support Queensland Racing so well. You support Nutrien, which I'm here for. Yeah. I get paid to promote Nutrien. It's probably one of the reasons I'm here. I got to meet you through those reasons. Yeah. But oh, I just think your story that you guys have is so cool and so great. And it's almost you guys are almost part of what Queensland is. Yeah. Like I've seen at the peaks and the troughs. And uh, right at the minute, you're on the upward trajectory. And uh, it's a great little story, mate. Thank you. Thanks for giving me a bit of time. And uh, look forward to catching up with you. I'll be I'm back in November. I'm pretty sure I'm back for the race series. So I look Good. forward to catching with you, up with you then. All right. Thanks very much, for that Paul. That's great. Thanks, mate. Good. Thank you.